Yeah. You're telling me that's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. You're just looking at basically these superhighways in cells called microtubules here in the bottom. They're superhighways that allow things to get transported from one place to another. But the even more crazy thing about it is that these things are transport, transported via these things called proteins. All right? Proteins are these crazy conglomerate of polypeptides that are wound together and those polypeptides are made of these things called amino acids which build polypeptides and they're wound together and they can function in crazy ways like these proteins are actually able to walk along the microtubules not only that but they can walk along but they can carry things as they go in the cell and the cell's needs now proteins have so many different functions now one of the most common functions that you hear of is that proteins are enzymes uh, they catalyze reactions um, they may they allow reactions to happen faster um, they can break macromolecules they can also build macromolecules they can break down proteins they can break down themselves it's kind of funny uh, they can produce DNA they can put phosphates on things which are kinases which we'll see a lot more in the future um, they can also act as defense mechanisms, like they act as antibodies, and they can be toxins, like in snake venom. There are proteins that act as snake venom. There are cell surface pro proteins that um, recognize things outside the cell, self-recognition. And there's transport and support proteins, like collagen is the most um, dominant protein in your body, and it makes up basically all of your... Uh, but muscle and bone structure is all made of collagen, which is a protein. Muscle, actin myosin, is made of proteins. Muscle contraction is a result of proteins. Regulation of things that go in and out of the cell. I and mean, we store things, we could go on and on. Um, whereas carbohydrates are more of structural support and energy for organisms. And they often are, are, are also huge energy sources. Proteins make up more of the scaffolding and day-to-day -day operations of the cell. Um, also, if we go back to the lipids, the lipids play function uh, play functional roles in uh, cell recognition and uh, making up cell membranes as well as also fat uh, and energy storage. But proteins are probably the more the most diverse of the three macromolecules that we've talked about. Um, this is an example of a polypeptide or a protein called hemoglobin that is a conglomerate of four different polypeptides folded on itself and then put together. These groups called heme groups are actually made of iron, which is which iron, if you notice, has a two plus charge. It really likes to latch on and um, hold on to oxygen. So hemoglobin molecules are those molecules that actually carry oxygen in the blood. Um, and your red blood cells are made of massive amounts of hemoglobin here. So just an example of one of a protein that is not an enzyme but does do things in the body like bring oxygen from place to place. Now an amino acid's basic structure is it's got a central carbon. They've got a carboxyl group on this end. Now if this looks a little funny to you, this carboxyl group, um, there usually is a hydrogen here, all right? And the reason why it looks funny here is because this hydrogen has been donated to solution, all right, which means it's an acid. Remember, carboxyl groups act as an acid. You really need to understand that, all right? Um, so we have a central carbon. We have a carboxyl group on one side that's donated its hydrogen. We have, beyond the central carbon, something called an R group. It's also known as a variant group. All amino acids, amino acids, will have the same exact structure except for the R group may change. All right, you'll all see an amino group on one side. Oh, remember this amino group's a base. It's accepting a hydrogen from solution. Hmm, interesting. So this amino group, which is NH2, but it's accepting an extra hydrogen from solution acting as a base, all right, is one side, a carbox on the other, and there's a hydrogen on this other carbon. So carbon will always be attached to four different things. An amino group on one side, a carboxyl group on the other, a hydrogen, attached to the central carbon, and an R group or variant group. All right. Now, one polypeptide through a dehydration reaction all right, is actually going to uh, bond to other amino acids. So this amino acid 
is going to build onto another amino acid to form polypeptides. So glycine is a specific amino acid. I think I, I don't have that chart with me right now. Sorry. I do not have the chart with me. Um, but let's look it up right now. So all the amino acids differ in specific ways. So amino acids. Images. Okay. So let's look here. Um, what you're going to see is many different amino acids that all have the same structure. All right. Except the only thing they don't share in common is their R group. All right. So there's an amino group on one side, a carboxyl group on another, a central carbon, and a hydrogen. This is attached to a methyl group. We have an amino group on this side, a carboxyl group on the other, attached to a central uh, carbon, and a hydrogen instead of a, a methyl group. This makes glycine, and this makes alanine. Um, you might have heard things called uh, tryptophan is, the com is a common amino acid. This amino acid, amino group on one side, carboxyl group on another, central carbon attached to big two double rings with, an amino, with, a, with a nitrogen group on it. This is called tryptophan. It's actually what people think results in the tiredness after eating turkey. Um, asparagine, histidine, lysine, what you'll notice they all have uh, a amino group on one side, a carboxyl group on another, a central carbon, and they're attached to weird groups. And that weird group is called an R group. All right? So we can take one amino acid, glycine. Look at that glycine. Let's go back and look at glycine here. Just the hydrogen as its R group is attached here to ILE. I think it's isoleucine, maybe. Isoleucine, where are you? Isoleucine here. It's an amino group, carbox group, central carbon, hydrogen attached to one, two, three, four carbons as their side groups. All the pink here are the side groups or the R groups. We call them the R groups. They're the variant group. All amino acids are the same except for the R group. So polypeptides are these long chains of amino acids that are going to end up building the proteins that we need. All right. Um, there are basic levels of structure here. Um, the first level of structure is just a bunch of amino acids, so by themselves, all right? Um, that's primary structure. When you take an amino acid, here we have the central, we, here we have, um, let me see, here we have a central carbon, all right, an R group, a nitrogen group, and a carboxyl group attached to a central carbon, uh, amino group, R group. So these are two amino acids here. Um, this is called primary structure. All right. And the bond that the bond that keeps them together uh, in polypeptides are peptide bonds. That's why they're called polypeptides because there's many peptide bonds. Um, secondary structure is when long chains of amino acids start to take on some form. They take on their own kind of like twisting type form, and this is called secondary structure because the form is being taken on actually by weak hydrogen bonds between different molecules of the amino acids um, that are near each other. And because of that, it takes on this twisting shape that's called secondary structure. Then we can take that structure, the twisting, and actually fold it over itself, on like this here. We can fold it over itself, and that's called tertiary structure. All right. Usually, um, tertiary structure still involves one polypeptide folded on itself. Um, and then quaternary structure, <laughs> quaternary structure is the, the most functional form of a, of a protein. So a quaternary structure usually is made up of many tertiary structures that are made of one polypeptide that's twisted and folded on itself that are made of amino acids, all right? So um, proteins, which have all the functions that we had outlined there before, um, are really just made of conglomerates of amino acids on top of one another, made into polypeptides, polypeptides folded on one another, and the polypeptides that are folded on one another are then meshed and uh, squished and arranged with other polypeptides that are folded on themselves, and the craziness ensues. They actually function to support life. It's crazy. All right. So that's just a little bit about um, the proteins. All right. This is a basic level of protein. Now, different types of proteins. One of the most common types of protein are these things called enzymes. All right. We're going to talk a lot about enzymes. All right. Enzymes basically are these crazy folds of quaternary structure uh, polypeptides that fold into specific shapes, 
All right, let's use this one here. They've actually, what you're seeing here is just a conglomerate of polypeptides folded on itself that fold into a shape that has these things called active sites. And the active sites are what actually carry out uh, protein um, or enzyme reactions, all right? The active site actually acts as a perfect environment for a specific reaction to occur, all right? This active site binds to a specific substrate. The most important thing about enzymes is that they're, en they're specific to a substrate. They only usually carry out one reaction, all right? But they carry out the reaction very well, and they carry out way faster than the reaction would happen on itself. So an enzyme is a protein that carries out chemical reactions, and it has an active site which binds to a substrate, okay? And it's made, it's basically the enzyme is quaternary structure, okay? Let's say enzyme video, maybe. Let's try this. What are enzymes? Animation, how enzymes work. Animations are cool. This is going to be pretty bland, but let's do it anyway. Enzymes are proteins that speed up chemical reactions in the cell. A special region on the enzyme, called the active site, has a shape that fits with specific substrate molecules. An enzyme works by binding to one or more specific molecules called reactants or substrates. Binding occurs at the active site. The enzyme and substrates form an enzyme-substrate complex. The interactions between the substrates and the enzyme stresses or weakens some of the chemical bonds in the substrates. These stresses encourage a link between the two substrates leading to the formation of a different molecule. As a result of the chemical interactions within the active site, a new product is formed. The product is released from the active site, the enzyme assumes its original shape, and is free to work again. Although this reaction has specifically illustrated the formation of a single product from two substrate molecules, other enzymes catalyze the formation of two products from a single substrate. So some important things there about enzymes, uh, which, are all pr which are proteins. Enzymes are not used up in a reaction. They're specific. Um, so basically they can carry out multiple reactions, one after another after another. Um, another thing uh, that the narrator said was that enzymes can, they can bind things together through dehydration reactions, or they can split things up, usually through hydrolysis or hydration reactions. All right. Can't wait to see you guys um, talk a little bit more, pro more about proteins. There's really so many cool examples that we can talk about, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, extra credit to anyone who decides to learn a lot about a specific enzyme.